Hello, uh, students. I hope you can hear me and see me. My name is Ross Arnold. I'm facilitating this session of the College in, to Career Fair. Uh, my, it's my pleasure. Uh, we're we're going to introduce uh, Clarkson University in a moment. Uh, you'll notice that uh, you uh, cannot talk. Uh, we've muted all the participants except for the panelists. Uh, if you have a question, at the bottom of your screen is a Q and A. Uh, so please type in your questions there, and hopefully they'll get to them at the end by the end of their presentation. Or uh, afterwards, they will get your email address and your question, and they'll respond to you individually. So your camera and microphones are turned off. Uh, since you have signed up for this session, uh, your uh, uh, you'll uh, be able to see the session afterwards. We need because it is being recorded. At the end of the session. At the end of the session, you're going to get a quick survey. It's only four questions. We do strongly recommend that you sign up for other sessions, but this is the last day of this fair, and the recordings will be available to you. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce Clarkson University and this uh, panel of distinguished speakers. Thank you so much. And we'll just be pulling up our presentation here. Um, so you should be seeing that now. And so thank you so much everybody for joining us today and for joining our Clarkson University panel. Um, I know it's five o'clock over here on the East Coast and it's still the afternoon where most of you are joining us from today. Um, so we do have a presentation for you this afternoon. Um, usually runs about 30 minutes and then we will leave the rest of the time today for questions. And as we are going through our presentation, feel free, add those questions to the Q&A box and we'll be sure to get to those after. So my name is Paige. I'm one of about 10 admissions counselors here at Clarkson and my primary territory is Long Island, New Jersey. I also have students from California um, as well as upstate New York and I will turn it over to Carrie. Hi everybody, my name is Carrie Labar. I'm an associate dean in our office. My territory includes, it's a long one, here we go. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Colorado, Westchester, Orange, Rockland, and Putnam counties in New York State. Phew, I'm gonna pass it off to Sue. Hello, my name is Sue Bynum, and I'm actually a Clarkson alum, and I actually live here in San Francisco now. So after working in industry for many years, I now work with admissions here at Clarkson to uh, promote Clarkson for students here in the California area. And I'm gonna pass it off to Sean, one of our students. Hi, I'm Sean and I'm a current senior at Clarkson. I'm also originally grew up in the California Bay Area in Walnut Creek, so I have a lot of love for back home. All right. Thank you so much. So just a very quick about us here. We are a smaller private four year institution in upstate New York, very heavily uh, STEM based as well as very heavily research based. And so on our campus, we have around 3,300 students. Every incoming year, we welcome about 800 new students to our campus. Uh, we do have about 270 faculty members on our campus. And the great thing is all of your classes will be taught by professors that do still work and uh, do research in their respective fields. And so we do have smaller class sizes, which I think is a really great benefit and allows you to get to know your professors very well. So we do have have in our classes about 13 to 1 on average. You may find some of your freshman classes start out a little bit larger than that, um, but they do end up paring down into those smaller classes as you go through your sophomore, junior, and senior years. And so as far as a very quick overview of our admissions and financial aid process, we are very hands-on in the admissions office as well as far as being your primary point of contact for all of your questions about admissions, financial aid, and really all things Clarkson. So there's really two dates to remember. One is we have early decision, which is a binding decision. That date is December 1st. Um, those dates always stay the same. And we have most of our students apply as regular decision students, and that deadline is January 15th. We also have a list of specialty scholarships and awards on our website that you can apply to separate from what we will automatically consider you for for merit-based scholarships. And the deadlines for those always align with the two decision deadlines. The big thing for us to note this year is that we are going test optional. You can still absolutely submit your SAT or ACT scores, but again, they are optional for our fall 2021 applicants. But outside of that, we will require your transcript as well as two letters of recommendation and the personal statement as part of your application. 
outside of merit scholarships, we will uh, review your FAFSA for any financial aid as far as that goes. Um, and that will always open on October 1st, so it is open now. Um, and with that, we are going to go right into our undergraduate programs. And I'm going to immediately turn it over to Sean to cover the School of Arts and Sciences. Hello, so I'm a biomolecular science major here at Clarkson, and this is a very interesting major where it's a bit of a hybrid between molecular biology and chemistry. So I have a little bit of a different course load. So in addition to learning a lot of these key courses such as biochemistry, genetics, I have also had the opportunity to really expand my horizons by taking classes more social science derived, such as like anthropology, human cognitive evolution, and philosophy. And this has really given me the ability to broaden my scope. And it's really been one of my favorite aspects of really kind of the learning side of college is that you necessarily don't know what you're gonna come here and learn. And that's really played a big role on me. So another big thing is that there's a lot of uh, professional research opportunities through professors. So for example, for my field, you know, there's X-ray crystallography, which is kind of identifying new molecular structures with electrons or mass spectroscopy. And this is just more relevant to me, but for all students in their fields, they're gonna have relevant opportunities to, to take, take up these things. And that's really great in terms of being out there to go and get that. So one thing that really kind of clicked for me is that you find these classes that really, really you're interested in. And I'll kind of get into this in the research professional uh, opportunities as well I underwent, but I really want to go into a PhD in immunology. And I really kind of look back is that this was a long process where by kind of having this diversity, I think it really gave me that tendency to kind of want to pursue this. So the, tying into that is one of the components of the curriculum that has really had a strong impact on me has been labs. So it's gonna be variable in terms of requirements between majors, but I've always had the opportunity to take labs that are relevant, required, and just very good in terms of kind of developing those analytical skills. So one of my favorite parts is kind of how you, you pr progress with the challenge and it gets more and more relevant. So I really see that as a strong dr uh, driving force towards me wanting to go into research. So it's, it's really a great opportunity. And then kind of going off on that, there's a lot of great resources here at Clarkson in terms of tutoring in the library. And uh, I've actually have now TAing for immunology, which is really great for me because I really feel like I'm paying it forward in terms of the interaction. And that's kind of what I really love about the programs here is it's very kind of student driven to an extent in, in, in terms of working on your stuff. So it's really exciting to reach out with people. And then, and then further going with that, we have like honor societies like Tri Beta for biology. And while I'm not involved, I think those are great networking opportunities and great places to meet like-minded individuals. So it's really great that you can really get into your arts and science and find a relatively small community that's going to be very like-minded. And then kind of spinning off this last is that I really enjoy that there's a lot of diversity in, in, in these programs. So like a lot of my friends and fraternity brothers, uh, some of them are political science majors or psychology majors. And it's really interesting for me to kind of talk to them, get an idea of what they're working on, get that other, you know, perspective and say, you know, I, and you could kind of get into something that maybe you're not all that familiar with. And it just, to me, it really kind of puts that bond where you guys are all working through college together, different things. And the arts and sciences is such a diverse group. It's just really exciting. So it's, this has been a major contribution here to really how I feel my success at Clarkson has been. And I think these programs here are top tier. Great. Thank you so much, Sean. And I'll just quickly go over the School of Business as well. So Clarkson has a nationally ranked David Ray School of Business on our campus. You'll see here that a lot of our majors, they end up being very interdisciplinary. So we don't like to have you go into a very, very specific field, such as uh, specifically going into finance. So we'll combine that with, for example, financial information and analysis uh, to give you a broader overview of the world of business. You have all those different avenues to go into after you graduate. So with that being said, there's really a couple major things to point out about the School of Business. One is that, as Sean was saying, uh, all of our students are required to complete some type of professional experience, whether that be an internship, 
co-op uh, research or some other form of experience. But in addition to that, all of our students within the School of Business are required to do a global experience. And so we'll be talking later on about our study abroad opportunities. Um, but that is something that our students in the School of Business will be required to do, or they have other avenues such as um, there is a global studies course you can take um, rather than going to study abroad if that's something that you would prefer to do instead. We also have in partnership with the School of Business, uh, the Clarkson Ignite program. And so the Ignite Center, they are there, uh, they're there for all of our students, but they pair very well and very closely with our students within the School of Business. And they've helped to launch a lot of really great startup companies for our students. They have a lot of great resources for students going into innovation and entrepreneurship as well. Um, and they are, again, just a, a launch pad for a lot of our different uh, companies that are coming out of the university. And so one other um, aspect that we have and one other major that's really important to talk about is the engineering and management program. And it's actually one of our top majors on our campus. And I'm going to segue that into uh, our next slide and I'll let Sue cover engineering and management as well as the rest of our uh, School of Engineering. Hello. Um, yes, I was actually an engineering major myself at Clarkson, but I did want to highlight, as Paige mentioned, our um, engineering and management program, which really is accredited as both an engineering and a business major. And it's just a really great blend of both those programs. Uh, Clarkson has actually offered this program since I was at Clarkson in the late 70s. And many of the engineering and management majors go on to be CEOs, senior executives, or own their own business. And recent grads from this program are really highly sought um, when recruiting um, by employers recruiting Clarkson graduates. So I really highly recommend it. And just a nice blend of the two programs for someone that maybe loves technology, but's not sure that they're ready to embark on an engineering career directly and likes the people interaction piece as well. It's just a nice blend. Uh, in general, I think Clarkson is a great option for California students interested in engineering, but looking for a smaller, more supportive, collaborative environment. Clarkson, I consider to be competitive, but not cutthroat, since as you apply to the university, you're not limited or restricted, or none of the programs are impacted, so you're not competing against another student to get a slot in that program. Uh, Clarkson traditionally has been uh, known as an engineering school, and about half of our students pursue one of the eight engineering majors that are listed here in our School of Engineering. But we find that many students are looking for more specialization. So in addition, we offer 12 engineering minors or concentrations in areas like biomedical engineering, architectural engineering, environmental engineering, and structural engineering. So I think it gives students a lot of options in terms of how they want to take, what direction they want to take their engineering specialty in. Um, one thing I'd like to share is that I actually, being a Clarkson graduate, I was actually a computer and electrical engineering major and went on to a career at General Electric. I initially worked as a hardware engineer designing specialized computers and now see some of that technology, believe it or not, in the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. But an engineering degree has always given me a lot of credibility and especially as a woman, I was really able to transition to a lot of other roles at GE. So I actually ended up in some information technology roles and eventually worked at GE Healthcare where I led a team of service engineers that supported imaging systems like MR, CT, and X-ray. Uh, at area hospitals and then actually managed um, healthcare IT projects at some major customers like Stanford Hospital and Sutter Hospitals here in the Northern California area. So I just want to share that experience with you and I'm actually going to transition now to Carrie who's going to talk about our interdisciplinary programs at Clarkson. Yeah, so again, kind of pairing off with what Paige said earlier and what Sue just said and what Sean said earlier, Clarkson is known for very much so our interdisciplinary programs and the Institute for Sustainable Environment is a great representation of that. So if you are passionate about the environment, if you are looking at a building and want to know, you know what, is it environmentally friendly? Is the inside of that building um, environmentally friendly? And is it healthy for everyone who works in there? That's what these two majors are all about. So environmental health science will definitely be a great fit for you. Environmental science and policy, if you were thinking about maybe rewriting environmental laws, maybe going on and being a lobbyist or working for the EPA, those are two great majors for you. Sean had mentioned earlier biomolecular science, double major between biology and chemistry. What I really want to hit on though is digital arts and sciences, because you might be wondering what in the world is digital arts and sciences? So it is a double major between computer science and that graphic art side. So if you were thinking video game design, virtual reality, anything to do with graphic arts, that's the major for you. 
And then we also have some pre-advising programs. You can see some of our students in that picture there. That's actually part of our PA program. So we have OT, physical therapy, and the physician assistant graduate programs on our campus. And a little fun fact about those programs and about some of the sciences that Sean is in, our students actually get to take anatomy in a cadaver lab. So you really get to be in there and really get to learn graduate work at the undergraduate level. And then are you still exploring? Let me start off and tell you, if you are undecided, that is totally okay. What you do if you're completely undecided with what you want to major in, that's what university studies down there at the bottom of this list is. It's our fancy way of saying undecided. So you will actually get a professional advisor on campus. Her name is Kathy Avedikian. By the way, she's awesome. And what she's going to do is start meeting with you over the summer. She's going to give you a call. She might Zoom call you or Google meet with you and ask you what your passions are. Where do you see your strengths? Where do you feel your weaknesses are? Is there a career goal that you have in mind? And she will start picking courses for you for your first semester. And then you'll meet with her throughout that entire first year. And you can also meet with her your sophomore year as well to figure out exactly what you want to do and what you want to major in. So by the end of your sophomore year, you declare your major and you're off into your major with an academic advisor in that program. Same thing goes with business studies. All of our business students come in with business studies. If you're undecided with engineering or have no clue what those fields of engineering do, that is totally okay. Engineering studies is where it's at. You will start the first two years really figuring out which one's meant to be you. We do the same thing with our liberal arts program and the same thing with our science program. All right, so our next little segment about professional experiences, I'd like to start off with really kind of recognizing how I see it in terms of my fraternity brothers and friends. This is a very desirable thing. This is a great opportunity to really kind of get your foot in industry and start to develop some of the more soft skills that you're not necessarily going to develop at university. And while I'm not going to co-op, I've had three internships doing biomedical research in the summer at a place called Trudeau Institute in Saranac Lake, New York. So this institute is very prestigious for uh, tuberculosis research, which used to be a, a huge issue in this country about 100 years ago. So they all came to Saranac for the cure. But uh, essentially this facility where I've done research at, I worked for a contract research organization. So we actually did research for clients. And it really was one of the most pivotal things I think I've honestly done in my life because I kind of came in here with, you know, like a freshman's knowledge, essentially, you know, finished my first year of college, you know, you're still learning and just, I came in and I just came with that attitude to learn and to work hard. And I started finding more and more, I was just loving it. I wanted to learn all I could. So there was just three years, a huge amount of progress for me going from learning how to grow bacteria and pathogens to working with mice, to work with therapeutics, to combat disease. And it got me really in the, into this field of immunology and really kind of bored of this passion where I really want to spend my whole life studying it. So this is just my story. You know, everybody has their own about co-ops and internships, but for me, it, it really made, made a huge deal. So I already have learned these advanced analysis techniques of like flow cytometry, where you look at cell types from a mouse following immunizations. I've worked on developing bacterial models, help people with autoimmune diseases and opportunistic infections. And it's, it's very, to me, very personal that I'm helping play a role in kind of combating these, these diseases that are a big scourge on society. So my experience has just been profound and like, and not even all going to the skills. I learned communication a big time. You got to work with, you know, six people in your lab. You're doing experiments all day. Like that is the real world. You just simply cannot, uh, you know, emulate that hundred percent in the university setting. So getting out there and just Clarkson really does do well with these uh, internships and co-ops. Companies want Clarkson students. They know their work ethic. They know what they're capable of. And it has been just huge. And then spinning off my three summers, they actually have a semester called the Trudeau semester, which I did last year. And that was much more kind of project focused where we had relevant classes like decision making and biomedical. Uh, we had kind of an ethics class and we learned techniques of immunology. That was very nice because it was kind of a more academic contrast. We had this influenza project to work on, which is very different from my bacteria work. So even though I knew I was in this field and I was able to even go further and get Clarkson credit and get kind of a different experience staying in Saranac Lake for, for, the, for the winter semester there in the spring. 
So overall, you know, these professional experiences are, are just absolutely amazing because they just really set you up for the after college. These are kind of more geared towards people later on. But I mean, look at me. I got an internship my freshman year that really set the pace uh, for me. So I think everybody could really look into even now, what, what do I want to do when I study this? And, and really kind of finding that interest and finding those people that actually do this every day in your life, it really can like invigorate you. And I just want to learn everything I could about immunology. And I'm really just, just holding this going forward. So it just, yeah, I highly recommend everybody can take it to take advantage of one of these, regardless of what you do, because this is just, it really makes you, I, I feel, you know, you can't really simulate this. And uh, it's great that Clarkson is so strong on it. And it's definitely one of our strengthening points of, of the university, in my opinion. Um. I wanted to also add that in addition to the experience that Sean talked about, we also have an opportunity as part of this Institute of Sustainable Environment that Carrie mentioned that in lieu of a semester abroad, you could also elect to spend a semester in the Adirondacks um, also doing environmental studies and research. So just a lot of different kind of options outside of sort of more traditional study abroad programs. Um, I also wanted to mention my own personal internship experience. I was actually a math major originally when I started, started um, college and especially being a woman in the late 70s. Uh, my dad was an engineer, did not even think to suggest engineering to me at the time. Um, but after hanging out with all the clerks and engineers on campus, um, it seemed like a much better career option for me personally. So my dad finally came around and helped me get a summer job at Clark's at GE uh, as an in engineering intern. And it was just a great experience. It was tons of fun. I got a lot of hands-on opportunity to do some very early uh, implementation and uh, trial and error with some graphic design systems and um, really felt that engineering was the right choice for me. Um, so I actually transferred into electrical engineering. Uh, then I did a second summer internship at GE. And my senior year, you know, based on that experience, I had several on-campus interviews. Uh, I had two job interview trips and had an offer before I even graduated. So, you know, having that summer intern experience not only helped me really feel comfortable and, you know, finalize my decision about what I wanted to major in, but it really benefited me in terms of my job opportunities as well. It just gave me a lot of credibility and, you know, uh, that experience that I could share with my employers. So I just really benefited from that. So to piggyback off from Sue and Sean, uh, Clarkson students regularly, they do earn one of the highest rates of internships, co-ops, and research positions across the United States. The reason why is our career center. They, number one, are utterly amazing. And so they are very similar um, structure-wise to the admissions office. They are all about the one-on-one -on -one interaction, just like Paige had mentioned earlier in the admissions slide. They are the same way. You can schedule appointments with our career center and they can help you with resume building. They can help you with interview prep. They can also start building your online profile in what we call our handshake. Um, it's an online portal that can put your resumes up and companies can also look at them. Here are some companies that are looking at our students. Some big names up there, IBM as always. Uh, Sue's a company there, General Electric is on there. There's a big one, Polarius, Procter & Gamble. Um, a big one right now is Lockheed & Martin. They have hired so many of our students recently. Um, so of course there's big names. And if you notice these big names, a lot of them are out on the West Coast as well. So you can do your co-op or internship back home. You don't have to worry about staying on the East Coast the whole time. So this has our stats from the fall career fair where we had over 190 companies coming to recruit our students. And this is just one building that they spanned in. They actually, because we're a small campus, they're all over the place when they're recruiting our students and they're doing the face-to-face -face interviews. We have them spanning across three buildings. So this year, because of the pandemic, we couldn't have them on campus. So we had a virtual career fair this year, first one ever. 115 companies were recruiting our students virtually. And we had a lot of great feedback saying it felt a little bit more intimate. Our students were very well prepared for all of their Zoom interviews. So we never know, maybe virtual will be the way that we do some fairs later on. Just some quick fast facts about Clarkson. Again, we're ranking the top 40 in the country for early career earnings because of all those co-ops and internships and that research, the median salary, this is zero to five years out, is a little over 64. We're at 97% placement rate with our seniors. By the way, that 97% are students going into their field of study. So if you are studying mechanical engineering, you are going into mechanical engineering. If you are studying global supply chain management, you are going into global supply chain management. 
Sean will hopefully get into an amazing PhD program in his field of study as well. And a very fun fact about Clarkson is that one in every five Clarkson graduates is either a CEO, president, or a senior exec, or they own their own company. So entrepreneurship is a very big aspect of the Clarkson world. Oh, and let's talk about study abroad. I know Paige touched on it about those business students, but everybody has the opportunity to do a study abroad opportunity, a whole semester, a summer, whichever works best for you. So right now we are paired with 55 universities and actually it's 29 countries. Now we got one more on there. Um, and these students are taking courses there that transfer back to us. Your scholarships follow you as well. We have an articulation agreement with those um, universities and a lot of them are STEM universities. So yes, engineers, you can do study abroad at Clarkson, no problem. The most popular is Australia because why not? Let's make that long flight while you're young and go to Australia. I also would like to say Australia is the most popular probably because the president of Clarkson is Australian and the university he went to as an undergrad is one of the ones that we partner with. And let me tell you, he's got some crazy stories about living in Australia as a kid. Um, and I think our students really wanna go where Tony went. Great, thank you so much, Carrie. And so we're going to dive next into our student life. And so one thing that I always say is that even though Clarkson is a smaller university, we're certainly not small in the way of what we offer for student life. And the last time I checked on our website, we actually have 220 different clubs and organizations now. So one big thing about Clarkson that I always talk about because I'm a huge hockey fan, uh, we have D1 men's and women's ice hockey teams. They're a huge draw for students, faculty and staff in the winter. Um, they really bring the campus together and there's a really awesome prep band uh, that really gets students and staff and everybody really hyped up about the games. Um, outside of the D1 teams, we have D3 athletics. Um, so there's a total of 20 athletic teams on our campus. Outside of that, if you're not looking to go into more of that, um, that varsity level, we do have intramural and club sports. So tons of those opportunities as well. Um, I always point out to students leadership opportunities. So we have tons of professional organizations organizations, honor societies, uh, organizations related to your field of study that I think are really great to get involved with. They're great for networking, uh, boosting your resume, and really diving deeper into what it is that's going to be your future career. Um, we do have Greek life on our campus. About 10% of our students are involved in Greek life. Actually, our uh, panelists, Sue and Sean, are both involved in Greek life, so they may talk about that a little bit as far as um, every other club and organization they're also involved with. Um, I have to say we're really great as far as offering special events on the weekends. Uh, every weekend, I know this year is a little bit different. Um, a lot of these events have gone virtual, uh, but usually on any given year, we're having every weekend, there will be a comedy show, there'll be movie nights, um, open mic nights, uh, concerts during the spring and the fall. So a lot of those opportunities as well as tons in the way of volunteer efforts. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sean and Sue to talk about what their student life experiences were like at Clarkson. Um, I guess I'll go first because I unmuted first, <laughs> if you don't mind, John. Uh, as, as Paige mentioned, I was actually in the sorority as well at Clarkson. Um, and for me, it was really not only a, certainly a fun social network, but it also was a great way to find support with other women engineers. Uh, my electrical engineering lab partner was a sorority sister, and uh, we had a great time at, at our labs, and we often did a lot of homework together. And quite honestly, the sorority has also helped me keep in touch with uh, the campus and my sorority sisters and fellow graduates over the years. And I really enjoyed seeing several of my sorority sisters at my 43 union last year. Um, one thing I was also going to mention that it doesn't, sometimes comes up when I talk to students is Potsdam, New York is actually uh, the home of uh, SUNY Potsdam, which is a, a, a New York State school. And so there's a lot of... Um, there's a Crane School of Music, and there's a lot of interaction between the two campuses. So there's never a lack of things to do. Quite honestly, I very rarely left town other than to go home. And I just, I never felt bored, even though being a very small community, there was always plenty to do. And I really, you know, really missed Potsdam when I left uh, to graduate and thought about it very fondly over the years. So um, I really I would recommend it. So Shauna, we'll turn it over to you. All right. So I'll start off with saying that one thing I've really enjoyed that was a bit of a transition from California is uh, like the, the environment, the woods, the weather, the winters. That was a big change. And we're right next to the Adirondacks. So I've always loved hiking and seeing nature, but also transition to Greek life for me has been kind of my big uh, 
kind of commitment, my big kind of lifestyle here at Clarkson. And it's been fantastic in terms of not only being fun and giving me a much wider social net, but it's also really given me this platform to develop kind of some of these other softer skills, like developing my character, leadership, you know, having to rise to, to challenges and, and, and resolving things in kind of its own way. And, and for me, that's really been the growth of Greek life has been, yeah, it's a blast, but it's really challenged me in ways that school doesn't. So I find really kind of combining that kind of social aspect where you're also building yourself up as, as a person, as a leader, as, as somebody to follow with your professional. It's like, it's, that's a great kind of balance that really forges you in my opinion. So I, I've really enjoyed this opportunity and I, no matter anybody's opinion, I would have an open mind about Greek life because it really is much more than you would think it would be. It really develops your skills would be my advocacy for that. Great, thank you so much. And just really quickly, I'm going to mention our speed teams. Um, these are really, really fun teams to get involved with. And I know a majority of students on our speed teams will be from our engineering backgrounds, but they're open to every student on our campus. So every student that joins the speed team, they have access to our machine shop. We currently have 12 speed teams. The one that you're seeing here is the Baja, uh, which I think looks really fun. Um, even somebody who did not go to school for engineering. Um, and so every student I know on this team gets a chance to test drive it before they bring it to their competitions. And so with that being said, again, 12 different teams for you to join. Um, I think it's really another great thing to be able to kind of further develop your skills outside of the classroom. And I think that's what Clarkson does really well is gets you outside of just those lectures that you're going to and really gets you those professional experiences where you're actually using those skills um, that you're going to be using in your future careers. And so again, these teams will be able to go to regional competitions. Several of them have gone to national competitions and done very, very well. Uh, so just another fun thing that's part of our student life. And quickly going to turn it over to Carrie to talk about our resources. Yeah, so we have quite a few for our students, especially our first year students here at Clarkson. So you can see a couple of them here. The one I really want to touch on is first year advising and our first year mentorship program. So our Clarkson students have a lot of advisors. You have your academic advisor, you have a first year advisor, you also have a mentor on campus for your first year as well that's tied to your first year seminar. So I'm actually a mentor on campus. I have six mentees um, that we chat um, anything that's stressing them out or if there is uh, maybe a class conflict, or maybe they don't know where an office is located on campus. Um, instead of asking someone on their floor if they're a little nervous, they'll just email me and ask me, and um, I can bring them there, or I can connect them to someone that they need. So for example, if a student told me, oh, you know, I really need a calc tutor, Carrie, where do I go? I'm going to pair them with um, the Student Success Center and make sure that they get that tutor available. There's also test prep on campus, especially for students who are thinking about going on to med school. This is a big one or going on to law school. The Office of Accessibility as well uh, for students who maybe need extra time on their exams. Um, this is the office that will work with you as well. And here's some just fast facts about Clarkson. I feel the most important one on here, in my opinion, is going to be one of the 50 most affordable colleges with a return on investment. And that goes all the way back to the student experiences, the majors that we offer that are interdisciplinary, and our career center. The hard work really pays off with our students, and that stat right there really proves it for us. Great, thank you so much, Carrie. And thank you again to everybody that's joining us today. Uh, so now we will turn it over to our uh, question and answer portion. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and I know for those of you joining us today, this may be the time where you're just starting to dive into your college search. So you may not even know exactly what questions to ask. Um, I know a big one that we always get in the admissions office. And so now um, if, if we can have the rest of our panelists um, just unmute themselves, um, turn on your videos. Um, I'm gonna make this a question for everybody. Um, so our first question that we always get is, what made you decide on Clarkson? Um, and I'm actually gonna open it up to the three of you because Carrie did also graduate from Clarkson. For me, it was, I was really say, Sue, you want to go first? You go ahead. Yeah, for me, it was really just the engineering. I actually started out, believe it or not, at Potsdam State as a math major and really liked what I saw at Clarkson, really loved the engineering programs and, you know, just loved being at Potsdam in the town. And it was just an easy decision for me. And it was an easy transition. So I was always very happy with it. And I, as I think, to Carrie's point, I think the Career Center 
was amazing and was uh, something I point out even now is a, a great asset for Clarkson and for Clarkson graduates. So um, it, it has really proved itself to be very valuable even when I was going to school. And Sean, I don't know if you'd like to take that question as well. I know you're probably the most recent of all of us. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, it's kind of an interesting story because, you know, uh, my grandparents actually live in Saranac Lake, which is about an hour from here. My grandfather had gone to Clarkson. So being in California, it's, you don't hear about it as much naturally because it's, it's a distance. But really learning about it from kind of an early age and spending summers up in the North Country here, and then being able to really visit Clarkson and really kind of learn about it from the perspective of an alumni, that, that to me was kind of the personal connection that really drew me in. But there's so many great things about the university and the location where I think it can be a really great sell for a lot of the reasons we said in terms of a good fit for what people want to want to pursue. But but for me it was it was a mix of kind of you know what I was exposed to and it just was it was just a great fit for me. I wanted to kind of get away from California personally as much as I liked it, see kind of more of the world and going this distance and just experiencing this culture. It's been a, it's a great decision overall. So I actually have a totally different story than Sue and Sean. Um, so I, I'm glad Paige included me on this one. Um, so I actually did something called the Clarkson School where you are able to come to Clarkson a year early. So you get to skip your senior year of high school and you become a full-fledged first year student on, our, please excuse my dog if you can hear him in the background, by the way, um, he's out of control today. Um, so I was able to skip my senior year of high school. Uh, my local high school did not um, really offer any APs or um, anything advanced in the curriculum. So my parents and I sat down and we discussed, you know, what would be my next steps and the Clarkson School appeared. Um, so I started my first year and I fell in love with the faculty at Clarkson. I really felt that I was not a number at Clarkson, that they really cared about my education and cared about me as a student, as a person. Um, and I really value that. And I'm still super close with my professors now um, to the point where Paige has seen us interact. I mean, it's as if time hasn't even really gone by. We still know each other really well. Um, so yeah, it was a really cool program. So if you're interested in the Clarkson School, you can reach out to me and I'll get you in contact with their director because it's an amazing, amazing program. Thank you so much, Carrie, for talking about that as well. And so I'm just going to throw in my two cents here, too. Um, I am actually currently a student as well, um, but I'm on the grad side of things. And so I'm going to Clarkson for my MBA currently, as well as working in the admissions office. And I just wanted to touch very quickly on my experience because it's something that I hear from all of our undergraduate students. And I have found that all of my faculty that I've been able to interact with um, thus far have been extremely accommodating as far as being able to uh, reach out to them if you ever have a question on a certain concept that you may be struggling with uh, and they always get back to you within about an hour or two uh, via email they're never going to answer the question for you but they're a really great resource for you to reach out to uh, first and so I've again you know I've heard that from all of our undergraduate students as well that the faculty are extremely approachable here they want to see you do well and oftentimes they are again they're your first resource not only for questions but for getting involved in research and many other other opportunities. So that's just been my experience so far and I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, so another question that I know we always get and um, I'm going to throw this more to probably Sue and Sean um, being residents of California when you were going to Clarkson uh, just talking about what we have to do um, outside of campus. So what does the weekend look like for students and what's kind of in the area for our students to enjoy? Um, one weekend, very memorable to me, was actually going to Montreal for the weekend. It's about two and a half hours away, and a very uh, European-like, very you know, kind of cosmopolitan city, and it was just such a nice break. I mean, even you know, honestly, having been growing up in Syracuse, uh, it was a very different environment. So going to Montreal was just all kinds of fun. I did not visit Ottawa when I was in school, but I have since been back to Ottawa, and it's another beautiful city. It's about an hour from Potsdam and just a nice opportunity to do believe clocks and offers, you know, bus trips up there, et cetera. So those are a couple of opportunities to get out of town to see something different. I also did go skiing uh, at uh, Tupper Lake. It was a little cold, but um, another opportunity there is skiing nearby. Um, I'm trying to think what else did I do? And other than that, I actually, I just always had things to do at in town. I mean, there was, um, there was a few parties, 
Uh, there were some fraternity opportunities. There was uh, always activities. There were sports. Uh, went to a lot of hockey games. Um, and it was always a big, big fun. And now the Shield uh, Arena is right smack dab in the middle of campus, so you just can't miss it. And it's just a great meeting spot, as, as Paige mentioned, for, for, for campus activities. So. So I'd say on kind of the getting out side of things, me being really into nature and hiking, I mean, even across the road from where I live, Clarkson has a nice woods. But if you want more than that, the Adirondacks, where I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, is maybe a 30-minute drive to, to already get pretty decently in it. And there's huge high peaks. There's fishing. There's all sorts of kind of outdoors activity. And then in the winter, there's snowshoeing, skiing. I mean, there, there's all sorts of cool winter sports to get into. So that's something I've really enjoyed. But in terms of kind of like in town, I think the social life for me personally has been really nice. Obviously with the, the pandemic, that's a little bit different. But usually this is a very social community. Like the hockey games, as mentioned, is a huge, huge community event. And, and under normal circumstances, there's there's things going on in the community on the weekends. You know, some maybe it's some sports uh, tournament of you know a spike ball or something like it's you can really make your own thing on the weekend. And I, I really like that you don't need to follow you go your own path. You know, that's what I found the, the greatest for success for me. That's great. And actually, Sean, just going off of that very quickly, I don't know if we mentioned yet um, the Outing Club. They are our biggest club on campus. Um, and so I know Sean was mentioning the Adirondacks. They're right in our backyard. Um, you can really get that sense of the Adirondacks across our campus as well. Uh, so we have 600 plus acres on our campus. Uh, we actually just renovated our Chill Arena. And so that has a more Adirondack feel to it as well. Um, but students on the weekends in the Outing Club, they will always commute. They'll go into the Adirondacks go hiking, kayaking, all those fun activities. Um, and then we also have a really big ski club. And so my big thing that I talk to students about is when you're in college, definitely try those new things. If you've never gone hiking before, um, now might be the time to go try that. Um, we have it again, right in our backyard. Same thing as Sue said, um, you know, of course, not right at this moment, um, but hopefully again soon in the future. I know I'm dying to get back over to Canada. I know Carrie is as well. Uh, so that's a big thing that our students will do. And again, you know, just experiencing new cultures that are very close to us. So I think we just have a couple more minutes left. And the final question that we get asked quite a bit, um, and again, if you didn't have any questions um, just for us at, right at this moment today, feel free, you can always email admissions at clarkson.edu with your questions and one of us uh, in the admissions office will be able to reach out to you. Um, but again, in closing, a big question we always get, and I'm gonna open it to everybody again, is your word of advice. Um, so what is something that you would want a student to know that's going through this admissions process now? And I'll wild card, I'll call on oh, Carrie. <laughs> okay, I'll, I was like all on mute, let's do this. Um, I, this year is weird. It is weird, we know it's weird, it's weird for us too. Um, we are still reading your applications from front to back, I promise. Paige is nodding, we're going to do it. We're, and Sue is going, we're going to do this. We're gonna read them all the way through. So if you feel that there is something you need to tell us besides the essay, are there extra things you wanna include in your application? Do you want to send us 16 letters of recommendation? I'll read them. Go ahead and send them. Go ahead. Um, let's say five. Five's okay. But the more, the merry, the better things that you're going to send us. We know. We know things, you know, last year, if you're um, a senior now and you're a junior and, you know, oh man, what happened? It's okay. We know. Uh, and I know the SAT and ACT because we're optional this year. If you didn't have a chance to take them and you're worried, that is where you can send us maybe an additional writing statement. You can send another letter. You can have a coach write you a letter. You can have, if you have a part-time job, have your employer write you one as well. But I promise we will read everything you send in. If you want to send in a portfolio because you're looking at digital arts and sciences, please feel free. You want to send your Eagle Scout project. We get those a lot. Paige and I love those. Please feel free and send those too. We love getting those pictures. Um, so don't worry. We know. And we're still going to read it front to back. So don't worry. We know. It's weird for us too. Uh, one thing I'd like to share is um, when you're looking at schools, a lot of students end up changing majors. You may not think you will. Uh, maybe when you're looking at, as a senior in high school, you say, I want to be a biomedical engineer. I know that's what I want to do. But a lot of students will get into that program, they'll get started, and maybe they will change their mind. They find something else they find more interesting. So one thing I recommend is, number one, find a place and a university where you feel comfortable, where you feel like it's the right place for you. Um, I know the first time I went to Potsdam and walked around, everyone was just 
so nice. I mean, they would always say hello, very friendly, very outgoing. Um, and so that to me, you know, it's made me feel so at home. Um, and then the other thing is also look for a campus or a university that has programs, not just one, but programs that you find interesting. And gives, that gives you the opportunity if you decide to change, you can change within the university or, and without relocating or going to a different school. So really give yourself some options or to give you some, some flexibility in terms of where you go with your college career. So I have a little bit of a different perspective concerning, I've, I've, I've done this about four years ago, but one thing that I really just kind of recognized what Sue was saying was that I actually applied here as a chemical engineering major. And I did that for my freshman year because I thought I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I, you know, at the time, but the more I got into it, it wasn't that I wasn't fit for it. It was that my passions just light elsewhere. So once I got more into the curriculum, more into these lab, you know, professional experiences, I kind of was able to still, you know, transition and not have really any negative repercussion because it was just a slight change in classes. You know, it really didn't affect kind of my trajectory. So I guess my advice would be just to kind of like, just have a plan, but also realize that a plan can always change and it doesn't need to be the end of the world if it changes, you can really roll with it. So just have an open mind. Great, thank you so much. And thank you everybody for joining us for our presentation today. Again, if you do have any other questions that you'd like to follow up with, email admissions at clarkson.edu. And thank you to our panelists today as well. And thank you for uh, presenting to our students. Uh, students, uh, as you're leaving, you're gonna be seeing a survey, only four questions. Uh, I, I think there's still a few sessions left this afternoon if you wanna sign up. And with that, thank you everyone for participating and have a great day. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice day. And nice meeting all of you too.